Sadoni, please send help. S O S. Today I'm cooking iftar for me and my wife again, and you guys are coming with me. Well, technically, I'm only making the dessert for today, but I've never baked in my life, so this is gonna be a struggle. And we're making blueberry muffins, baby. <laughs> so my wife has this thing, and this is what we're gonna use today if I can figure out how to use it. Firstly, we need a hundred grams of butter. In to the mixture. In 140 grams of caster sugar. In we go. Oi, I'm sick! Yay! <laughs> Look at that! This actually makes life so much easier. Ooh, I just wanna... <laughs> so the next step is adding eggs. I may not be a chef, but when it comes to cracking eggs... Woo! Professional baby! Now it's time to mix. Now we need to add two tablespoons of milk. In we go. Now we add 140 grams of natural yogurt. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract, baby. And now we mix. I think I did something wrong. Why does it look like that? I made scrambled eggs. <laughs> no, I know it's not meant to look like this. I can't go back now. Now we need 250 grams of flour. Two teaspoons of baking powder. One teaspoon of baking soda. It's getting serious. Pour this in and we mix slowly. I think I saved it. It looks so much better. We need 125 grams of blueberries. This is the main ingredient. But before we add it in, I learned that you actually should add some flour on them so they don't sink. Let's do that. In we go. I think it's ready, baby. Look at this. We have our tray ready and our scooper. I actually can't wait to see what these come out like. Nice. It is time to put them in the oven. I'm nervous. And in we go. They're done, but <laughs> they look a bit burnt on top. But they also look really good at the same time. <laughs> you tell me. Ooh. Now it is time for the taste test. Ooh, look at this. It's in there. Oh, this slaps. I made this. Mm. Let me know what I should make next. Ramadan day nine iftari. Before I break my fast with this day, I have to say a dua. Allah ma'ala qasam tu'a bika aman tu'a ala riski ka wa aftar tu'a. I'm gonna have some aluminite. No, not aluminite. Samosas. And some pastry. And I'm gonna have this big kebab. Big. Now it's time to eat blood. Mm. Very jolly, jolly tasty.
Creamy chicken stuffed yeah, garlic bread. Seeing your friend convert to Islam is the best thing that can happen to you. What do you do for a living? What do I do for a yes. living? I worship Allah. You worship Allah. Allahu Amazing. Akbar. Barakallah. Thank you. Mashallah. Thank you. Thank you. جئت بعد العسر يسرا ربنا أعلاك قدرا يا إمام الأنبياء أنت في الوجدان حي أنت للعينين ضي أنت عند لأجارهم قلت ظاهر ما فيهم فبدوت شخصا آخر كي أتفاخر وظننت أنا أني بذلك حست غنى فوجدت أني خاسر فتلك مظاهر لا 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 نحتاج المال كي نستاد جمالا جوهرنا هنا في القلب تلالا نالا نرضي الناس بمالا نرضاه لنا حالا This video is for my future wife. She's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. That is here. That is home. Ya Nabi Salam Alayka. Ya Rasul Salam Alayka. Yeah, I got some apples for you. Okay, it's a bit here. Oh, good boy. Hey, come in. Hey, come to play. Mmm, I'm only joking. Ooh, thank you, thank you. Wow, you like that, don't you? Let's go to bed. It's time to go to bed, okay? Let's so I just woke up right now. As you can see, my sister told me to review her food. And yeah, this is what she made. Cool fam, what's this Lasagna, food? man. It's lasagna? Yeah, it's a one pot lasagna. I made it in a very it's unique way. It's a one rate. pot lasagna she made in a really unique way. This is the plate. 
And he's got Give me that little piece. It's got salt in it. We had the warm dollar. Like. That's straight out of the pot. Mmm. 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 Brother, I'm not going to sacrifice my whole conversation because of your video, bro. I don't man. The, the world don't look good when I'm that. <laughs> the video is dead, then. Man, I mean, like one of them badines who go to the gym and look at the guys. Look at them. Look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tie that, man. <laughs> 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 Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. What's your goal? What are you saying, fam? When someone came to the Prophet Muhammad and said, Ya Rasulullah, which one is the most blessed of deeds? He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, As salatu ala waqtiha. The salah prayed, is allocated time. What happened to shaitan, bro? Ask yourself. Shaitan was put in the hellfire for eternity because he missed one sajda. How many times and how many say, says that do we miss on a daily basis? I know, I've been there, my guys are between the age of 14, 15, compared to the like 18, 19, we go through an identity crisis. I understand, I was there. Sometimes when our parents say to you, Amen, are you praying? Wallah al I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what happens? I hear footsteps coming up, Allah Akbar, stay away. I'm not even praying. I'm not even here to expose myself, but this is the reality, bro. I'm not going to point out other people's faults, so why not point out my own faults so people can either relate to me and learn from it? But in reality, you're more shook of your own parents because you don't want them to see you in that, in that manner where you jump into sajda straight away. But yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you in every move you do. Who should I give my love to, my respect and my honor to? Who should I pay good mind to after Allah and Rasulullah? Comes your mother. Who next? Your mother. Who next? Your mother. And then your father. I have the most exotic fruits in the world and I'm about to break my fast with them. Cause look at this brav. Fasting all day so I am going to enjoy this. This big thing is called the sour sop and it's from Colombia. Why the hell does this look like it has blackheads on it brav? Oh my goodness. I've definitely butchered this but... Mmm. This thing over here is called a custard apple and it's from Brazil. Just open this up. Uh, whoa. This tastes like sweet custard, bruv. Mm. Guys, I've actually demolished that, bruv. This over here is a rambutan and it's from Thailand and this looks like it needs a trim, bruv. Eee, it looks like a lychee. This one here is a cactus fruit and it grows on a cactus from Mexico. What on earth? I'm scared of this one though. Mmm! This BTEC orange is called a granadilla and it is from Colombia. I feel like I can just squeeze this. Oh my goodness. Whoa. These flavors actually take you by surprise, you know.
Ramadan day 8 and this is why 8th iftar. Today we wanted Pepe's rice boxes. Bear in mind our nearest Pepe's is 40 minutes away. So whenever we get Pepe's is a treat. The wings were so juicy and succulent. I love flats and they always do flats. We stocked up on our favourite sauce. Extreme peri peri sauce. And a rice box combo with the garlic mayo just slaps. See you tomorrow. Whatever page it lands on are the words we all need to hear. Imagine that you're shopping with someone you love. No, not just someone you love someone you're madly in love with now suppose that this person picks out a gift for you in a particular color and style how would you feel about that gift chances are you'll cherish it simply because of who gave it to you there are things events people in your life that allah has picked out for you are you pleased with his choice do we not love the gift simply because of who picked it out you will know you really love someone when you love anything that comes from them, no matter what it is. And you will love their gift, not for the quality and the gift itself, but only for who it came from. The whole world, from its beginning until its end, is not worth an hour of sadness. So what about the sadness of a whole life? So, how's Ramadan? It's good. Honestly, it doesn't affect me whatsoever, you know? I never have breakfast, never have lunch, you know? By the time I eat, it's always 6, 7 o'clock. It's a breeze for me, honestly. But I me am addicted too. to coffee. It's very easy fasting. What are you doing? Did you forget? Are you sure? Are you doing this on purpose? I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're a girl. Sorry, but I can't ask. <laughs> can't ask girls. You can never ask girls if they're fasting or not. So. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Today I'm cooking iftar for me and my wife again and you guys are coming with me. I am not a cook, I'm still learning, but today we're making pizza, baby! From scratch to scratch. We're starting off with the dough. I'll be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing, but we have some bread mix here and we're gonna get started. Okay, this is what we're using. Ooh! Some olive oil. No! I dropped this in there. What I meant to say is you add some salt. Now we mix. I feel like, you know like when you see a mum on the cartoon? I don't know if this looks right. I'll just mix it with my hands. Oh my god, it's so warm. Why is it so warm? We need to speed this up, but I found this. So... Ooh. Okay, so we're finally getting somewhere. And I probably should have washed my hands. Don't worry about that. Now we leave this to rise. Now time to make the sauce and I'm starting with cutting this long onion thing. <sighs> my eyes are struggling. <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> It's time to fry the onions and I'm learning from the comment section. This time I will not burn them. You told me to add a little bit of butter to the mixture. Let's see how it goes. And the butter. That's more like it. It's time to add the sauce, baby. Ooh. I'm feeling confident about this one. You guys got onto me last time about not seasoning. I did, I just didn't film it. I am not making that mistake today. Now it's time to prep the toppings and you know I had to get out the Japanese knife. Ooh. This thing is so beautiful, so sharp. Let's go. Got the mozzarella. Ooh. <laughs> the amount of time I need to put this in my mouth. I can't. I'm fasting again. This is looking ready. We have a pizza stone to make a stone-based pizza. This is going to come out so nice. So apparently you have to punch this to get the air out. Are you ready? I'm going to prep the pizza on here and then slide it onto the pizza stone. I've never done this before, but we're just going to go and see what I can slowly getting there and i'm trying to be careful because i don't want to mess this bit up okay this was really hard um <laughs> i think i'm kind of there it looks really small okay 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 i'm scared time to add the sauce Ooh now we're adding the toppings i gotta be quick finish it off with some parsley Ooh. Ooh. look at all that cheese baby final touches now into the oven on the stone pizza oven baker thing 
guys i did it and it looks beautiful oh my god <laughs> you know what maybe i should be a chef <laughs> now it's time for the taste test bismillah <laughs> this is banging i'm gas let me know what i should make next A 16-year-old girl named Siham is a very shy girl. She lives her life in peace without alcohol and drugs. She likes to spend time in the mosque and prays five times a day. She likes to play soccer. She is a closed person but only opens up before Allah. She likes to spend time with her siblings. She likes listening to Nasheed and reading Quran. She tries more and more to strengthen her Iman. She has a focus on only four things, Islam, education, soccer, and family. She is a girl who trusts in Allah and His plans. Brothers and my sisters have control over how Allah made his nose. Today we make jokes about another individual's nose, right? Huh? Sankis will win, yeah. Huh? We make jokes about that individual's nose, the way Allah Azza wa Jal created him. Or we might, or we might refer to a group of people as those who have big noses. And we make fun. Or the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created his bashara, his skin color, and we are making these generalizing, sweeping statements, making fun of it, my brothers and my sisters. Right? Who is it that gave him that nose, that ear, that skin color? Did he choose that? Allah chose that for him. So now when you make fun of that, who in essence are you actually insulting? When you think about it, isn't it Allah that chose that for him? And now you're insulting that which Allah has chosen for him. Today, if you have a house and someone builds it and you start mocking the way this house has been built, are you mocking the house or are you mocking the guy who built the house, my brothers and my sisters? Huh? You're mocking the guy who built the house. So this is extremely, extremely serious. Right? It's not a light matter. This is why the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tusubu rih. Don't insult the wind, right? Also he said, La tusubu dahar. Why? Because the wind doesn't have control over itself. It is Allah that sent it. So when you insult the wind, who in essence are you insulting? Very, very serious. Akhi, I'm going to ask you two questions. What would you do if your boy got shot? Bro, if my boy got shot, I'm riding out immediately. And what would you do if you heard that Adan? I, 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 don't, I don't know, bro. You don't know? Come on! You don't know, you don't know! I've got a question for you. Yeah, brother. Brother, why does it rain? One second, let me play my sound. Ah, brother, ask a very good question. The rain comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brother, when was the last time you prayed? I can't remember, man. You're a waste, man. You're a pussy, yo. You're a dickhead, but you're a waste, man. But you're the scum of the earth. Look at you, bro. And you have pride? You have pride shame on you, bro. Me? Perfect? Trust me, I'm far from it. You see, nowadays people have the narrative to assume that just because people post religious content, they are some next mufti or sheikh. No one is perfect. Everyone sins. Everyone has flaws that they need to fix up on. Just because I post Islamic content or reminders doesn't mean I'm claiming to be a sheikh. It doesn't mean I'm perfect. More time, the content I post are reminders for me first and foremost. And if that benefits you guys, then that's even better. How can I not spread the beauty of Islam? The same goes with Salah. Praying five times a day is the bare minimum. However, many people consider that as being very religious. And perhaps if you haven't implemented the five daily prayers into your life, now's the time to do so. Remember, death does not discriminate. Whatever it may be, you're not just ruining every addict's life, but you're ruining your own mother's life, your own father's life. And for anyone, and I'll say this proudly, 
that wants to go out there and be a bad boy or go down this path of being a gangster and you want to be untouchable, I advise you to do it on one condition. When your mother and father returns back to Allah, because it is not fair for your mother and your father to be having sleepless nights or from the morning, from the moment you leave the house in the morning, for them to be stressing about what their son's been doing outside. It's not fair on them. So if you want to live this bad boy life, I, I want you to do it. Go ahead. But when your mother and your father return back to Allah Azza wa Jal, because I've been there, I have to come to the hospital because my brother's been stabbed. And I'm so... Oh, brother. You okay? Say, say. I wish I could help you as I help my son to be a good citizen. If Salahuddin were to be here, if he alive, he will forgive you. That's the way he was. That's the way he is. I'm not angry at you for being part of hurting my son. I'm angry at the devil. I blame the devil, the devil, for misguiding you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you at all. I want you to know that. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. Mr. Rofer, do you wish to make a statement? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry about what happened to me. But I do applaud you. Because it takes a powerful man to know that somebody has hurt them. And do what you get up there and say what you just said. I have a child. Cool. I can't imagine the hurt, the pain. This is really hurt. If your social media is causing you, for example, to grow as a Muslim, a Muslima, it's causing you to learn new knowledge, it's causing you to uh, use your time wisely, effectively, it's a platform for you to give da'wah and to speak about your religion and to forbid what is evil and to promote what is good. Guess what? Your social media is part of the dunya that Allah has spoken highly. If in your particular circumstance, your social media is being used for other things. It, it's, it's, it's detracted from your salah. It's made your attention span very short. You're unable to lower your gaze. You're responding to every DM that's coming your way and so on and so forth. Then in that scenario, your social media is part of the dunya that Allah has condemned. Do you see?